Here we go with another set of JavaScript practice exercises for beginners. Hi, this is James from Junior Developer Central and welcome to another set of JavaScript practice exercises for beginners. In this series, I've been giving you a set of challenges and giving you a chance to solve them on your own and then we go through a solution together to compare results. If you have a second before we start, don't forget to subscribe to support the channel and to get future video tutorials and updates. And as always, leave a comment if you think you've come up with a particularly inventive way of solving one of the challenges. Right, so let's get started with exercise one. So exercise one is a string based challenge and we're being asked to write a JavaScript function that returns uh, when a string's passed in, letters in the string, but in alphabetical order. So you can see the example given is webmaster and you can see the expected output if we pass that string into the function. Okay, so this is a bit of a sorting challenge. So pause the video now and have a go at this one and we'll come back in a second and go through a solution together. Okay, so for exercise one, uh, we've basically been given this string and we need to put it into alphabetical order. And the way we would best be doing that is to split the string up into individual digits, individual characters, and then run some sort of compare or sort function to actually reorder the output uh, and then join it back together as a string. So our key tools when doing things like this and working with strings is calling the split function on the base string and then calling the join function on the array that we've modified to join it back together as a string once we're completed. So the way I'd go around solving this one is if we first of all create our function, and as I said, we want to uh, split the string that's passed into the function, and we want to pass in an empty string into the split function so that we get each individual character from the base string. So now we've split that string into an array, we can call all sorts of array functions on it, uh, such as the sort function. So the sort function, if you haven't come across it in JavaScript, uh, does what it says on the tin, um, but it is a bit of a weird function to use because when you pass in the callback to it, it actually takes two parameters, A and B. And at each iteration as it goes through the array, A and B will be two values in the array and you're kind of comparing them against each other to decide what order they should be reordered in. So for example, on the first run, uh, A and B will have the values of W and E respectively. So we need to kind of compare those values and make a decision as to what order to put them in. So if we were to say something like, is A bigger than B? Then we need to return one of two values, really. We need to return a positive number, such as one, or a negative number, such as minus one. And this will influence the way the sort goes. So if we pass back a one, if A is bigger than B, and a minus one, if B is obviously smaller, then this should order the letters in the string in alphabetical order, in ascending order. So the last thing we need to do is just join the array back together to create a final string. And if we test that out with a few function calls, you can see calling alphabetical order with the webmaster string gives us our expected output. And if you look at the JavaScript string that we passed in the second call, you can see that all of the A's are first, then C, and so it is in alphabetical order. So looking at that, it appears that the function has worked correctly. And we're quite lucky that we can do this in JavaScript because some languages you can't directly compare two strings together to say which one is larger, at least single characters of strings. Um, but because of the loose typing nature of JavaScript, we're actually just able to say, is A larger? than B and, and JavaScript will allow us to do that. So hopefully in your solution you got something similar to that. Uh, if you did get something wildly different obviously feel free to post that in the comments. But if you're happy with that solution let's move on to exercise two. Okay so for exercise two uh, we're being asked to write a JavaScript function that accepts a string as a parameter and then counts the number of vowels that are within the string. Um, so just to be clear as well when we're talking about vowels we're talking about A, E, I, O, and U. I did read somewhere when we were researching this that there are some of the letters that can sometimes be considered as vowels, but for this exercise, let's just stick with those ones. So we're literally looking for an integer value to come back from this function with the number of vowels in a particular string. So pause the video and have a go at this one, and I'll see you in a moment when we go through a solution. Okay, so there's a couple of different ways that you could approach exercise two. Uh, the way I approached this was to take the string and then filter out any letters which aren't vowels and then just return the length of that particular string. Well, it was actually converted into an array, but to determine the vowels that are left over. So my function looked a little bit like this. 
So the first thing I did in my function was to accept the, the string that we're counting uh, vowels for, and then I also passed in another parameter of letters, and I defaulted that to an array of A, E, I, O, and U. And I thought this was just a nice way of being able to allow the user, or someone else writing code using this function, uh, to override that letters variable in case they wanted to count different letters other than vowels. So we're making this function a little bit more multi-purpose. So again, I'm going to split the string so we've got it into an array. And now it's in an array, I can actually call the filter function to remove the non-vowel letters from there. So now I'm just going to pass in a callback where every letter in the array is passed into the variable of s on each iteration. And the key thing here is using a function that you can call on an array called index of, which basically returns a value of what position uh, an item in an array occurs at. Like, so what is its actual index? So within our letters, if I call index of, and then pass in that value of s, so this will be every letter that's in the base string on each iteration. And I'm actually going to check if the index of this is bigger than minus one. And what this means is if we get minus one value back from the index of function, it means that the letter is occurring at some point in the array. Because if it's minus one, it basically means it's not found in the letters array. So it could be at position zero, one, two, or any number above that. So let's tidy this up a little bit. So what we have at the moment is our function defined, we're splitting it into a, a, an array of strings, and then we're filtering out anything which isn't in the letters array that we've defined in our argument that's been passed in. So the last thing we need to do now is we should literally just have vowels left in our string, so we can literally just return the length back from that function call. So let's test it out. Oops, and I've just realized I've actually misspelled index there, so it's index of, not indef of. Okay, so when the code runs, you can see we've got uh, two results of two, and that makes sense because in the first call to count letters, we've passed in A, B, C, D, E, so there's two vowels in there of A and E, and in the second call, we've passed in A, B, C, D, E again, but we're only checking for the letters of B and C. And let's actually just remove one of those just so we get a different result in the console. So we can see that the default value of the letters argument is being overridden when we pass in a second parameter to count letters. So I think that's just a nice touch with this function is just making it a little bit more flexible and then enabling it to be used in other ways. Okay, so that's a solution for exercise two. Uh, let's have a look at exercise three. Okay, so for exercise three, uh, you need to write a JavaScript function to convert an amount or a value into coins. So imagine if someone said you've got 46 cents and what possible coins could that comprise of? And we just want this to go to the uh, largest denomination. So for example, uh, if the number was 46, you could see we've got a, a 25 coin, two tens and a one. They would make up the largest solution to give us 46. Okay, so pause the video and have a go at this one, and come back in a second when you're ready to go through a solution. Okay, so when I tried to code a solution to this one, I was trying desperately to get it onto a one-liner, and it just started getting really complicated. Uh, so I thought, because there's no point trying to force something onto a one-line uh, function, I split this one out into a larger for loop. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and write out what my solution was, and then I'll talk you through it, because there's nothing too complicated in it. Okay, so this was the solution that I came up with for exercise three. And as you can see, there's a fair few parts to it. So it's not just a case of reducing down the uh, original array because we need to check whether the co each coin in question can actually be divided by and fit into the numerical value that we've been given. So let me just talk you through it quickly. So first of all, we define an array called total coins. Uh, and I've set that as a constant because we can actually just call the push method on that to add values to it. And this is what will actually be returned at the end of the function. Then we're going to loop through all of the coins that are set up into our coins argument. And as you can see, I've used a, a default argument again with the default coins that we've been provided with, but we could change that by passing in a different parameter. Then the next variable that's defined inside the loop, the this coin num, uh, is basically saying for each coin that we're going through, let's see how many times that can actually be divided into the total value of money that we've got. And say that's come back with a number of two or three, for example, we need to then push that many number of coins onto the total coins array. So I've used another loop there, and there's a few other ways we could have done it with uh, creating an array and, and mapping it onto it. But I just thought for something different, let's just go for a nested for loop for this example. And then the final thing is we need to actually make sure that we're reducing that value of money, otherwise our code will just keep on running 
and not actually get closer to the end result. Okay, so as you can see in the console, we've got these expected output that we wanted to, and if we were to test that out with a few of the values, you'll see that that's working uh, as it should do. I'm very open to this exercise. If anyone has got any other suggestions or ways of solving it, to so put them in the comments below. There's a few things I think that could be improved with this function as it is, um, but I think probably just a, a different viewpoint and coming at it from a different angle would definitely be a good idea. So it'd be great to see your solution in the comments if you've got something wildly different than this. Okay, so that's exercise three. Let's move on to exercise four. Okay, so exercise four is a short and simple one, and it's to write a JavaScript function which will extract unique characters from a string. And as with all the other exercises, there are a few different ways of doing this. So uh, pause the video now and have a go at it and see what solution you come up with. And then I'll go through a couple of solutions that I came up with. Okay, so my solution for exercise four looked a little bit like this initially. So this was the sol first solution I came up with, and it was basically to do what we've done with similar exercises earlier on, uh, which was to split the string and then be able to filter it and uh, do some kind of processing to get rid of all of the non-unique chars. Uh, and this is something I did actually do a few times at work recently as well, which is basically to take the uh, array inside the filter function and actually slice it at each uh, iteration as we go through with the filter function, uh, but slice it on the next character ahead uh, to actually check if it exists using that index of function. And if it doesn't, if it's uh, equal to minus one, there isn't another occurrence of this uh, later on in the string, we actually return a true value. So the item, the, the character in the string is actually kept in the array. But if it does appear later on, so if maybe the value is like two or three, then this will give us a false. And that first occurrence of the character in the string is actually dropped. So we only get the latest. So we only get the last occurrence of it in the string and it will only give us one instance of this. And it will only give us one instance of this, the character. Uh, so we will get a unique array returned. Uh, of course, as with other things, there is different ways of doing this. So as you can see, a really simple way of doing this would be to just pass the split uh, string into the set constructor. And a set is basically a unique list of values. So you can see because we've passed in that array that's got lots of A's, B's and C's, uh, we only get one instance of each of those characters. And you can see in the console that this actually is uh, typed as a set, it's not an array anymore. Uh, so you, there are various methods that you can use to get those values out. But if we did want to put it back into an array, we can just wrap the implicit return in a new array and use the spread operator to make sure that it gets transformed back into an array for us. So I think I like the second version a bit better because it's a bit simpler and it's using some clever techniques to actually uh, use the power of JavaScript rather than having to, to write complicated checks to get the same result basically. Okay, so that's a good solution for exercise four. I wonder if you've got something similar. Feel free to share your solution in the comments and let's move on to our final exercise, exercise five. Okay, so exercise five is quite similar to exercise four, but there's a little twist, and it's basically to write a JavaScript function to find the first not repeated character. So you can see in the example string, we've got lots of characters, but E is the only one in there that's not repeated throughout the entire string, whereas the other characters are. So your job is to go through the string and only pick out characters that aren't repeated anywhere else within the string. Okay, so pause the video one last time and have a go at this one, and then come back in a second when you're ready, and we'll go through a final solution. Okay, so for this solution, I did go through and use filters again, and uh, I'll show you how I did that. Okay, so like the previous uh, exercise that we did, the initial solution was a little bit unelegant, um, but this way I think is a good way to solve this particular exercise. So let's just run through it. Uh, we first of all split the string to get us an array, and then we first of all run a filter function, And but inside the callback for that filter function, we're actually accessing the overall array and filtering it again. And the callback we're looking at in the second filter option is basically saying, uh, is the array item uh, from the inner filter function, is each item in there equal to the item that's in the parent filter function? So we're basically looping through the array twice and comparing each item in turn 
with every item in the array. And then we're checking the length of the inner filter to see if that's exactly equal to one. And if it is, we return true because that item only occurs once in the total array. So let's just pass in our example string to see what that comes back with. And as you can see, we just get the E coming back because that's the only item in there that's actually not repeated anywhere else. So I think it is probably possible to solve this one using a reduce function, but I think it'd be quite tricky to keep track of which items uh, haven't been repeated already. Another option would be to generate a map of all the characters that are in there and how many times they occur. And then if it's only once, then just return those from the overall function. So that's it for exercise five and the rest of this tutorial. I hope you found this useful in sharpening your problem solving skills. Just before you go, don't forget to subscribe to support the channel, and I'll see you next time.